I was reminded to make sure I go to Periscope Depth to say hello to Command and make sure I sunk the sunk the boat. But yes, hello everyone. FPS Chesley here. Stream time. I just had some coffee, so yeah. I'm ready to go. <clears throat> pong. I just noticed you said pong, Roger. Is that your way of saying ping? <laughs> ping pong. Stream time. Stream time is the most wonderful time. Yeah, I'm just going to about, yeah, that right there, about five, six, zero feet, stream this wire out. Uh, I guess we've just, no, we're still, we're still climbing, we're still beneath the layer. No signs of our sunken sub, we got them good. Got that first explosion, then we got crush depth, so we're good to go on that front. Oh, you've been sunk twice now, Eds? <laughs> Hello, Santa Fighter. I have the mic further away from my mouth today. Is it sounding fine? I can boost it a little bit if I need to. Ah, oh, nice, Ben. I thought for a second you had a fever. I was like, oh no, you sounded fine last night. <laughs> <clears throat> Retrieve oh. the port toad array. Can reel this bad boy back in. It's fine. Good. Good. <laughs> the devil himself. Alrighty. <clears throat> I keep thinking I'm up here, but I'm, I'm still down here. Still going to go up there. But yeah, that's interesting, though. The history only goes back so far. It is not infinite history. I'm still amazed that I did like this whole like circle thing. It's very interesting to me that I ended up going like a big circle. Was he at any at any point over here when I was here? I don't remember. I feel like I always kind of had him on the inside of the circle, like I was corralling him or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take forever. Okay, switch that back to the starboard. But we're now at depth. Going to slow the hell down to two knots just so this wire can stream properly. Make turns for two knots. Maneuvering eye. Oh, yeah, look at that thing flying out there. Oh, yeah, going nice and quick. Yankee search, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and uh, give ourselves a ceremonial ceremonial drop. Stream the starboard towed array. Hell am I. Contact is dropped, never to be seen again. How the tubes looking? They all got stuff in them. That's good. Active search. Con radio, new message traffic received. Target two destroyed. Very well. We got that quick. All right. Plus a course for the nearest star. On through till morning. <laughs> Engage. Oh, that's why it was going so so quickly. I was like, why is this streaming in and out so quickly? It's because I had time lapse on. <laughs> totally forgot. <clears throat> uh, we can go faster now. Give me a All ahead, two thirds. Two -thirds. Make turns LMI. for four All knots. Ahead, two -thirds. Maneuvering eye. LMI. Well, oh god. All ahead, <clears throat> one third. Hell my. I don't want to go too fast so that flowing wire never streams in. Uh, 
Cool. All right, let's get the heck Come out of here. Come right to course zero four oh, six. Hel retrieve the starboard to towed array. Hell my. Steady on course zero four six. Did I just order a course change? I didn't realize that. Alrighty, well, now we gotta get to op area three. I probably won't be smart about it this time and check periodically. I'm just gonna zoom there. I'm just gonna zoom straight there. All right, to give us a depth of such. Make my depth seven, five, nine. All ahead, feet. standard. Bye -bye. Hell my. Let's just zippy to do our y and our our y zippy to do dot our way. Up to op area three here. All ahead, flank. Hell my. Get there in no time at all. I'm wearing my Capitals jersey today. Game five tonight. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? It's still kind of rainy here. It's been rainy here the past few days. So I'm waiting for some sunshine. It's been nice and crampy. Minefields. <laughs> Is it rainy most of the time? It's most unfortunate. Oh, part of me wanted to go up and see if I could, if I was gonna get like any kind of transmission, like pick up any ESM from uh, some airborne threats. I might do that at some point in this transit here. Back at it again. Hello. Oh, the real summer. Okay. Uh, what's the depth looking like through here? Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not going to run into any kind of under undersea mountains here. Jumping through hyperspace ain't like dusting crops, boy. Gotta be careful we don't bounce off a star or fly through supernova. And your trip real quick, wouldn't it? Hello. to fire, how to launch a torpedo. I was going to be rather tired for this stream, but I got coffee instead, so like, woo! <laughs> Ready to go. These freaking playoff games have been starting at like 8 o'clock in the evening now, and of course I gotta stay up and watch them, and then I have to go go to bed later after because the games are ending later and it's wreaking havoc on my sleep schedule but it's all good contemplated doing this off stream but I guess I lost I lost track of time so I was just like eh just need to start the stream well you need to have a contact why you need to have a contact and the contact has to be classified as something 
So you can't launch against this because this is an unknown. So you got to classify it as something or designate it as something. Surface or sub. And then now you can shoot it with a torpedo. This is the quick and easy way to do it. Uh, I'll just click this. I didn't want to accident like I'm sure if I clicked out here, it wouldn't actually shoot that torpedo, but I'm just going to do it like that <laughs> just to be safe. But yeah, it just needs to be designated as something. Yeah, that is much better than when the game starts at 1 a.m. I will hand you that. I don't know why here in the States they feel the need to make it go from 7 p.m. to 8, 8 p.m. though. 7 p.m. is a prime starting time for me. Yes, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Glad you could catch it. That's why I started doing them on the Saturdays, so the the non-Americans could hopefully get in here. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go shallow, see if we can't find ourselves some kind of MPA. Go poke the bear. Let's uh, go ahead for standard. All ahead standard. Hell my. Make my depth zero, seven, one feet. Dive I. May even want to charge ourselves some air if we can. We only have. Only have. We only have 12 shots worth of air left. We do have that extra 10 points you can get from charging under underwater, but might as well charge some air. How the Caps doing in the playoff? Well, they beat the Penguins, and if I remember correctly, you were a Penguins fan. <laughs> and now it's tied up with the Lightning 2-2. Caps won the first two games very handily, and then the Lightning have won the two most recent games. But now it's back to Tampa, and the Caps have been doing very well on the road for whatever reason, so hopefully that will be good. All ahead, two-thirds. Hell am I. Hello, Captain Yellowfin. This is a like a training mission kind of thing. You go to these different points and you got different types of platforms to engage. In Op Area 1, it was just a, uh, a Kirov-class battle cruiser, right? No, no, no. Sorry. It was a uh, Kiev. It was a Kiev. Kiev battle cruiser carrier thing and then here in op area two it had like the fight of my life with an akula three but got him at the end of the last stream in dramatic fashion yeah 12 shots 1.5 akulas <laughs> yeah game three was pretty the captures had a bad outing in that game the lightning played better but game four was more even on that point but the lightning got more pucks past Holt B, and uh, Caps couldn't get barely any pucks past uh, Vasilievsky. Oh, thank you, Why? I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. It's very nice of you to say. Okay, uh, I should probably be being a little All more. All ahead, two thirds. All ahead, two thirds. Careful Hell about I. coming All up here to periscope third. depth. Hell my. It is raining up here. Ugh, I still want to make this resolution bigger, but I can't. I should probably get more water. There's, we don't need to watch this happen in real time. What is Periscope depth in this boat? Dude, can you keep up to date, please? Thank you. 071 feet. Uh, we might need to go a little shallower than that. Let's do the old 65. Make my depth 065 feet. Dive I. Raise the ESM mass, chief of the watch eye. The yeah, lightning are pretty good. I hate them thoroughly. <laughs> do not like the lightning. So I hope the Caps can win. I think the last time the Caps played the Lightning in the playoffs, they got swept for nothing. I think I went to I went to at least one of those games. I think I went to two of those games, and they both sucked. They may very well not be anything 
in range up here. Did I raise it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm kind of seeing it. It's very dark, hard to see. I don't even know if it's popping the surface. Some, it seems kind of buggy in RA, like that you actually have to like go shallower than periscope depth to do some of this stuff. I think that may be because of me. <laughs> I told Crazy Ivan about how like as soon as you get to periscope depth, you can be mass detected. That's how they model the mass detection. It's just what depth you're at. Not if you actually have any masts up. So I was like, can you make mass detection or can you make periscope depth a little deeper so you can't automatically get mass detected or something? Just because like some missions you have to be running kind of shallow. And I think that's what is going on here. Is this, I mean, there, there, there very well may not be any, uh, Commence ventilating. I don't think there's any ESM contacts to be had, so we'll just lower that. Lower the ESM mass. Chief of the watch out. And we'll ventilate here for a little bit and recharge our air banks. Oh, nice. Yeah, hockey is great live. Yeah, I've been noticing that. Because sometimes if, if you don't realize that the ESM is at the shallower depth, you get, like, f false negatives thinking that, oh, you're in the clear, no one's really emitting radar out there when there could be, like, a million platforms looking down for your butt. <laughs> yeah, I guess there is snorkel depth. What do they have it set as? Exactly what five, I'm at. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, while well, that's charging, we seem to be pretty secure here. I'm going to go get water. Yeah, Silent Hunter... It's fine. It's not really my cup of tea. I prefer submarines over submersibles if you catch them adrift. Yes, I have OV-8 in my closet, and I'm wearing Kuznetsov. And at one point I did want to get an Oshi jersey, but I have not yet. I don't know if I will. It's always something you want, but then you look at the price tag, and it's like, woohoo! Nearly 200 buckaroos. Yes, because that's off CVG shirt. <laughs> I enjoy me some Russian hockey players. They crack me up. <clears throat> what I should really do is blow ballast perfectly close to enemy. World War II surface torpedo attack. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were implying that I was going to be the torpedo. Yeah, they're pricey. The OV jersey was a Christmas present from my parents, and then I bought the Kuznetsov jersey with like my first paycheck <laughs> of a of my engineering job. I was like, hell yeah, time to celebrate. Okay, we are good. Secure ventilating. I still laugh that the 100 does not fit. Probably doesn't higher resolutions. Alright, deal. Let's uh, press on here. Make my depth six, six, five feet. Dive I. All ahead, two thirds. Helm I. A modded SH3 with a Type 21. Yeah, that's basically like a whiskey class Soviet submarine, isn't it? All ahead, standard. Helm I. All ahead full, hell my. All ahead flank, hell my. Oh yeah, I'm sure that, that environment is quite hostile to German submarines. <laughs> Did the German subs even have a presence after the Allies invaded Normandy? I feel like their presence diminished even prior to that point. Fido? Why does that sound familiar to me? Fido. I 
All right, what do we got? 21 minutes. We're going at eight times speed. We'll be there in less than three. Careful, careful approaching this op and flank. You got it. <clears throat> Steady on course. We'll Zero, old, four, uh, three. Let the waypoints help us out here. We'll set our speed to two zero knots at this waypoint. Because I've never done this option before. I've seen it since I made that first tutorial video, but I don't think I've ever used it. So we'll see if it works. Oh, fine. I was the first guided ASW tour. Yeah, I saw something about that the other day saying it got like... 55 kills for the Allies in World War II, which is a lot. And we'll slow down a little sooner. Why not? We'll be a little safer. <laughs> he sure do. Yeah, there you go. Slow down to 20. Cool. Okay. We're at our silent speed, which someone on Subsim brought up recently. And it's probably safe to say that the Seawolf probably does not need primary coolant loop pump operation until above 20 knots. I'd never thought about it prior to that point, but that's probably what they mean by quiet to 20 knots, is that the reactor pumps probably don't need to run until above 20 knots. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead, and we can probably just say sayonara to these Steady on course. waypoints. Zero, four, let's go four. ahead and slow to All ahead standard. standard. Hell am I. Come shallow above the layer. Let's go to oh, the layer's getting a little shallower. We'll go to five zero zero feet. Five oh five is fine. Make my depth five zero five feet. Die by. Flow noise is flow noise. But according to like Lawami where the frequency lines come up. The size of the ship is like, what do they say? They say it's the third frequency line or the second frequency line. The first frequency line is the 50 or 60 hertz, which is like that electrical generator. And that's what really carries over the distance. That is a good point. That's not like the reactor pump noise level. That's the electrical generator level. Yeah, the waypoint programming is is quite interesting. You can set depths and speed. It's like uh it's like uh Red Route One kind of stuff. <laughs> Maintain course and speed. What does it say? Those charts are only so precise. If we're going at such and such a depth and such and such a course. This thing handles like a pig. Talking smack to me. Talking smack about me. Come left to course zero zero three. Hell my. Give me a map and a stopwatch. I'll fly it through the Alps in a plane with no windows. <laughs> in my Hunt for Red October video, I have like a, a new sequence where like, you know when... uh 
the political officer is explaining to Ramius about like what their mission is. Like every time the camera looks at Ramius, I have it zooming in and there's like a high pitched ringing and like a heartbeat going on in the background. Like it's like, I just want to smash this guy's head. (laughs) If the charts are accurate enough. Stream the starboard towed away. Hell am I. Got a little splash on my face. <laughs> Alrighty, Sonar, what do we get? Uh, give me North Center. This should come up pretty quick at 15 knots. Yeah, okay. Coming out pretty good. You know what? You could figure out how long this towed array is based on how, how long it takes to come out and what speed you're going. You could figure out how long the towed array is. Because it, it goes out, like when you start streaming at the towed, pretty much you can assume it's kind of just, it's probably being towed along a little bit, but it's really kind of just sitting in place. So like at 15 knots, the, the length of time it takes for this to fill up, you can divide 15 knots by that time. Yeah, and then that gives you a... You'd have to convert the time to hours first. But yeah, you can figure out how... You could figure out how long the toad is. <clears throat> a Virginia looks sleeker than a Seawolf? I think it depends. The Virginia looks less... Uh, the Virginia is more long and slender. The Seawolf is short and stouty. The seal is closer to that optimal length over diameter of seven and a half, which is like your ideal for drag in a submarine design. The alpha is very close to that shape as well. I think the sea wolf is around eight or eight and a half on length to diameter. The sea wolf is wide. Like the 688i in Virginia have a beam of 33 feet. The sea wolf has a beam of 40 feet. Okay, Sonar, what do we got? Oh, hello. Con sonar. I have right a off new the bat, man. Bearing zero four eight. Designated Sierra two zero. All right, two All thirds. Ahead, two two thirds. thirds. Hell am I? The Phantom Red October video. Um, I want to show everyone what I have with it so far, but I don't want it to like accidentally become popular. I'm not trying to toot my horn or anything. I just don't want it. I don't want. I don't want it to like get any impact until the real one comes out. So what I might do is I'll, I can upload the latest version and make it unlisted and then upload a different video where when you watch this other video, you can then get to the Red October video from that. And then I can leave the Red October video unlisted. Uh, what boat are you in? If you're going down that deep and exploding, that means you're going too deep. All right, we got ourselves a friend here. Nothing on the broadband. Oh, hello, Thomas the Dank Engine. Glad to have you here. All right, what do we got? We got ourselves, we got ourselves a 50, and we got ourselves a 160. Let's take a look at our frequency sheet. Kirov, Kirov, Fuching, Baris, Chilikan, or Deepak. I'm assuming this is a Kirov. Kirov reporting. <laughs> Let me. I'm gonna go ahead and add in something on the stream for. Uh, Excel here. Oh god, sorry, it's freaking out for a second. Oh, it's not even working. Hang on. Yeah, I'll mess with it. 
later. Doesn't seem to be working right now. Welcome to accounting with FPS Chasley. Yes, indeed. Yes, it looks like we got ourselves a cure off. It could be one of these other things. Probably not any of these other ones. These other 50, 160s are all resupply ship kind of thing. So, cure off, cure off reporting. Uh, we could potentially have a reciprocal over here. But I'm going to go ahead and use my engineering judgment and say that that is not the real contact and that this is the real contact. <laughs> But this guy's probably decently loud. Okay, why is that all the way over here? So we're probably picking him up at a, quite a clip. Yeah, we got our intercept over here. So he's probably on a somewhat parallel course, or going slow, or far away, or all three. But yeah, he seems to be far right now, but we'll probably have ourselves some airborne threats potentially here. How do I feel about a Kirov? Well, I guess I would technically be more concerned about a Kiev. Was it a Kiev? With all its, uh, has much, much more, many more helos. I, I know a Kiev has a toad array. I don't know that a Kirov does. It's too hard to read it on here. I'll look at it in the full reference, but I don't know that this thing has a... I don't think this has a toad array. Hostile high. Big old son of a gun. Kirov has a nice shape to it. It just looks big. I remember the first time I saw one in cold waters on the periscope, I was like, holy crap, that thing is huge. Alrighty. Uh, radar. Sonar varies by hull. Includes horse jaw. Orion horse tail. Oh, okay, I guess it does have a toad array. It's still such a weird ship. It has nuclear end dino propulsion. Yeah, the Kirov is a battle cruiser. Oh, what was that up there? Thomas the Dank, and an actually question about you guys. What's your most played sub? Mine have to be 688i. Big son of a bitch. <laughs> She's called the Red October. Um, I usually can put Excel over. Previously, I'd been using Office 2007, but now with work, we have Office 365, so I just downloaded it at home. Because that way I can, if I work at home I can work on stuff from work with it so I'm using office 365 now it didn't seem to want to capture it I can try again window capture game capture no display capture no it have to be window capture what the heck is lock app Sam I'm, I'm that's when I click Excel this is what it shows as a white screen so Something's going weird about it. I'll mess with it later. But yeah, I wish there was an easier way for me to show it. Because whenever I end up clicking on Excel, I forget I gotta like show it over here in the stream window. I don't mind playing as Akula. I don't like the earlier Akulas that have the Azimuthal broadband display. It's very hard for me to figure out what's going on with that. It's a very weird combo. Why wouldn't you just make it full nuclear? That I do not understand. The sonar's having sonar's freaking out. Can't tell that there's a second frequency there. <laughs> All right, frequency scale eight hundred. So our next frequency is going to be here at like three two zero. Okay, well, we've been tracking this guy for a good while. He seems to be rather distant, or like I said, rather parallel course. Let's get a shorter interval on this, try and better see what's going on with this data. 
it's gonna be hard for us to really localize what he's doing at this point. He's just so f too far, too many possibilities in the solution. So I'm not even gonna bother entering in a solution yet because it's gonna be nonsensical. Me thinks I'll come due east here, and we'll chew on him for a little bit that way too. Come right to course zero nine four. Hell my. Yeah, a lot of people mention they like the azimuth for the directionality of it. I've never had that issue. I don't know why, but it's that's never been a, an, an issue for me is the directionality of the sonar. But yeah, you, it, you know, it's it's very archaic because you you literally can't tell what your contact is doing unless you just stare at it all day, or like or if you were to record it and play it back and see what it does over time because you can't really you don't have the same options as here where you can be like okay he's uh, increasing bearing rate so he must be getting closer to me kind of thing like you don't really have that much of a luxury with it you kind of got to base it on what you're seeing in TMA. But I guess if you're having that issue with the azimuthal sonar and the Akula, you could use the, uh, you could just use auto TMA. And he'll be able to sort it all out. He doesn't care about history or anything like that. Hello, Captain Yellowfin. The short answer is they don't. The long answer is it depends. <laughs> For American boats, they definitely don't. It's not really part of their doctrine, at least you know on the short term. With you know, if you're talking like Steady on th course, if they were to zero, operate together, nine, which American four. boats don't really do, yeah, they don't really communicate with each other. Supposedly, Russian boats were much more in in tune with like air forces and surface forces to try and hunt down enemy subs, but. Americans never really did anything like that. <clears throat> American boats pretty much operate by themselves because they don't want to have friendly fire. <sighs> yeah, the Gertrude's more for talking. Two boats are close enough they can talk over like encrypted sonar waves or something like that. <clears throat> How does FFI? Do you mean IFF? <laughs> oh, I'll be right back. They identify friend or foe by sonar signature. But they try their... They... they Headquarters will keep American boats apart from each other. And I'm sure they don't really even know their, what their other boats are necessarily doing all the time because it's all kind of classified stuff. But I guess underway, the captains would probably know if someone else was going to be near them. <clears throat> yeah, when you try and look at Russian naval ships, if you try and put on, if you try and put American operating patterns on top of Russian naval ships, they don't make any sense. But if you then look at Russian ships with their own operating doctrines, then you can see why they are the way they are. But if you try and apply American operating doctrines to them, it, they don't make any sense. You're like, why would they be like this? <clears throat> no U.S. Wolf Packs. <laughs> Okay, is our toad straight yet? Yeah, I think it's just straightened out. Got some wonky data, but we'll be getting it sorted out here soon. Are we seeing this dude on broadband yet? I don't think so. I 
Uh, signal strength is getting stronger. The second line is now harder to see, <laughs> which means I'm getting closer. We got that third line yet? No. Nope, no inkling of it yet. That is interesting. Where's that layer at? 583. Of our will. Towed at 497 feet. Very well. Arrow in the broadband shows behind me. Yeah, that's where my toad array is. No, sorry, this is a. Uh, this is where my baffles are. This is the opposite of my course. See over here. This is where my spherical ba that shows. So it's just showing me where my where my spherical baffles are. Yeah, cold waters is. But it's, I still have yet to play South China Sea at all. Yeah, it can be quite hard. <laughs> cold Waters, more of the difficulty in Cold Waters is, I really think, strategy and, and tactics. More of the difficulty in Dangerous Waters is knowing how to work your boat. <laughs> That's my opinion, though. Cold Waters is deep in its own way. It's deep in making sure that you do your attacks well so you don't get swarmed with missiles and stuff. Okay, if this guy's going six knots, he's way the hell out of Pearl, dude. He's probably going faster. He seems to be pretty far. No way I'd be picking them up at six knots at this range, I don't think. What about 15 knots? But yeah, he seems to be pretty far, though, in either heading towards or away from me. What speed I choose really does not seem to affect the solution all that much. Seems to be far. Eh, I kind of like the way the, I think I like the way that the, the going away dots are stacking up, then the coming towards dots. But yeah, he seems to be far. Regardless of speed, he's about, he seems to be about here. Pretty far away. Did you hear that? <laughs> Cold Waters would be ideal for multiplayer RBUs for days. Yeah, the devs have said doing multiplayer for Cold Waters basically isn't going to happen. The level of programming would be insane. Their next game could have multiplayer, but none of them really have any experience programming multiplayer. Uh, the captain will go away for a second, and yeah, someone else will take over. Someone will be the officer of the deck. So the person who's really in charge of the boat at any given time is the officer of the deck. Obviously the captain's always in charge, but the person who's actually commanding the boat at any one time is the officer of the deck. The captain can be both, but is not always both. And please correct me if I'm... That's, that's what I've interpreted. I'm not a Navy officer. Please correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> Donnie. Oh, hello. Hello, Donnie. Oh my gosh, we got a lot of people here. 27. Wow. 
All right, so this dude seems to be far. There's probably stuff aloft. Part of me is wondering if I, if I should try and take a peek. See if I can't see anyone aloft. It's getting pretty bright. I'm surprised we're not seeing that third frequency yet. But that could just mean he's really fat. He's really far and making a lot of noise, possibly. Big son of a gun. I'm assuming this is just a bastardization of how it's modeled in game, but I'm assuming it's not just a solid metal tower with a with a radar dome on top of it. <laughs> oh, it kind of looks that way. But yeah, they're interesting boats. They kind of almost have that typhoon shape to them, and by that I mean the superstructure is like so far aft and all the Juicy stuff is up front. Still interesting they chose that shape of the typhoon. Well, the NDBs are modded stuff, aren't they? <laughs> Almost subs get their 40 millimeter bovers back. Uh, whenever subs aren't meant to stay submerged, <laughs> it makes sense on the submersible to have AA stuff, but not on the submarine if you catch them adrift. All right, let's go. We're going to see what's going on here, shallow wise. So let's get our depth. We'll go to uh, six five feet. Make my depth zero. All ahead two six, thirds. Five, All ahead two feet. thirds. Bye Hell my. All ahead one third. Hell my. We're technically still not even in the op area yet, <laughs> but we will see if anyone's up here flying around. It's going to be giving us headaches. Oh, it's going crazy. And we'll be sneaky deaky Dutch about it as well. Oh, toad dipped beneath the layer. So we cannot see our cure off right now. Raise the ESM mass, chief of the watch eye. Yeah, those kinds of like encapsulated stinger stuff would be. I would. I personally probably would never use those unless it was like a last resort kind of a situation. Is that active intercept? What is that little thing sticking out? Because as soon as you launch something, everyone's just going to be like, go kill that. <laughs> There's your datum right there. There's that sub you can't find, so go kill it. You have to be like pretty sure that the thing that you're gonna shoot at's the only thing there. Okay, it looks to be clear. If there are airborne threats, they're not emitting anything. All right, let's get that guy out of here. Lower the ESM mass, chief of the watch eye. Make my depth five zero five feet. Dive eye. Hello, Anton. Yes, I need to record some 688i HK. I'll do that today or tomorrow. 
I have been getting behind on that. And I apologize, but yes. That is still going on. The sub is its most vulnerable, the modern day sub is its most vulnerable on the surface. So, if you can avoid the surface for as long as possible, as much as possible, that is good. The submarine lives and dies by how much other people can or cannot find it. Outlast? Isn't that the name of like a horror game? Has anyone played that? Roger, MPAs are not that strong. <laughs> strong, IRL. Do you mean with regards to how they how they are in cold waters. Yeah, I would agree. Based on some anecdotes I've heard from former submariners, it can be pretty tricky to actually find a sub in real life from a Hilo or or P3 MPA. What has the US done wrong? Nothing. It's not in the US's control. And the Cold War is over, so it's like hard to justify spending more money on stuff. <clears throat> America's advantage in acoustics was not inherent or God given or anything like that. All right, let's go back All to 213. Two thirds. So we're going to try and actually stay at or below 500 feet to avoid potential MAD detection. When you start getting below 500 feet, according to the manual, I'm not sure if RA has messed with this, but 500 feet or below, about 166 meters, 170 meters, you avoid, you start greatly avoiding MAD detection. And our layer, thankfully our layer is deeper than that because that would throw a, a wrench in things. So we'll, we'll go slightly, we'll go to 505 feet. One side gets more technologically advanced and the other side eventually catches up, it just always happens. <clears throat> And not to discredit what the Russians are doing, but America still has numbers by far in the nuclear boat realm. I'd be curious if the if the rest if the number of other nuclear boats in the world even adds up to the number of nuclear subs the U.S. has. <clears throat> Spent a lot of money on that stuff. <laughs> All right, where's our boy? There's our boy. I guess our toad ray is kerfuffling around a little bit. Haven't looked at the solution in a bit. What's he up to? It's looking pretty steady. We should probably change course again, huh? But yeah, when you change depth, you get wonky toad data as well. So be anytime the toad is not perfectly still, you're going to get crappy data. So always be cognizant of that. Always be cognizant of what maneuvering will do to your solutions. Because sometimes solution making is the number one priority. Let's go back due north. Come left to course three, five, nine. Hell Hello, I Nikita, Nikita. This is a one big training mission. We start here and we go to each of these little areas and we have to fight certain contacts. Up here we had a Kiev class air cruiser thing. And then over here in Operator 2, we fought in a cool of three. That was a very long, a very long but satisfying fight. And now here we're tracking ourselves a Kirov battlecruiser. 
heavy cruiser, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Uh, maybe. It's probably fair to say that they someone else they'd eventually figure out some other way. Walker. To the, as far as I know, all Walker did was really just tell the Soviets how loud their own bird, how loud their own boats really were, and how easily American boats could track them, which they were not necessarily aware of. He didn't actually tell them how to do that or anything. He just told them that. Just. <clears throat> They weren't built after World War II. The Kirov was definitely built after World War II. I think Wikipedia calls it a battle cruiser. Or a heavy cruiser. It's a cruiser. What does the Steady game call on course. it? Three, five, nine. The game calls it a guided missile cruiser. But it's like it's like the closest you get to like a modern day battleship. This thing's enormous. And this thing packs a punch. These are filled with freaking supersonic heavy supersonic anti-ship missiles. It really is quite a spectacle of a ship. <clears throat> Walker is possibly the most infamous traitor. Well, I guess the most infamous traitor would be that one guy from the Revolutionary War, but in U.S. history, probably the most damaging traitor. Hello, Duncan Cook. He was a naval intelligence officer, and he told the Russians for paltry sums of money national security secrets about how easily American subs could track Russian subs. Still be downloading the sub locations from some server. I think he told the Soviets about, I think the first intelligence dump he gave them, he, he got like 30 grand for it. I'm like, really? That's like 30 grand. Half a year's salary for insanely huge state secrets. <laughs> Yeah, he gave him tons of crap. <sighs> There's another one too, wasn't there? That gets over overshadowed by Walker. It is pretty far. I can just I can go into the layer and just kind of speed up towards him a little bit. Am I starting? To, I think I'm starting to see him on the broadband ever so slightly. Ooh. Okay. Let's see. TPK eight. Ten knots. Very well. Are we getting good toad data at this point? Have been for a little bit. Uh it looks like he changed course. I'm thinking he changed course. That little kink right there. It looks like he changed course. I'm going to wait for this data to straighten out for a little bit, though. Sure, it was much more back then, but it still really wasn't a lot compared to, like, how much money the U.S. spent. <laughs> I guess that's a fair way to think of it, how much money the U.S. spent on that advantage compared to how much he sold it for. <clears throat> Talking about 
billions of dollars of American state property.